a stock market swing trader demonstrates a thorough stock analysis. A stock market swing trader demonstrates a thorough stock analysis. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, bonjour, bonsoir, mes amis. For those of you who are new to us, we are the TSTW24 traders. And our website is www.stochastic-macd.com. The title of the video is uh, A Stock Market Swing Trader Demonstrates a Thorough Stock Analysis. All right. We are looking at uh, the IBM stock on the yearly chart. And I have on my chart uh, the Commodity Channel Index Indicator, period 14. All right. Now, talking about uh, a thorough stock analysis, all right, when we are talking about a thorough stock analysis, uh, the number one um, technical indicator is the price itself. We are not trading the technical indicators, we are trading the price. So, in order to conduct uh, a thorough stock analysis, one must always focus on the price itself, all right? So in an uptrend, the price must display higher lows and higher highs. In a downtrend, the price must display lower lows and lower highs. When the price is consolidating, the price will display equal high and equal low. This is, what, this is what we call the market pattern. There are three market patterns, the rising channel, the horizontal channel, and the declining channel. When I start trading fast, I was struggling looking for uh, some formula that I can use, okay, formula that uh, can work for me anytime. And uh, I was looking at the wrong, okay, things. But in fact, there are things that we call the market stable data. And um, the market patterns are also part of uh, the, what we call the market stable data because they do not change. Price going up, the price will display higher lows and higher highs. That will never change on any time frame. This is true. So I finally find out that uh, in order to achieve consistent winning trend, one must always work with the market patterns on any time frame. So you may be wondering what that's got to do with IBM stock. Look at this chart here, okay? So which market pattern do we have on this chart? That's the first question if one wants to conduct a thorough stock analysis. What is the current market pattern? It is a rising channel. So whenever I see that, the first thing that is coming to my mind is that, okay, I must concentrate on bullish trade setup, okay? Any bearish trade setup in this condition uh, is uh, a contra trend, all right? So looking at IBM stock, all right, we can see that it's a rising channel. Not only that, if the price is in an uptrend, okay, remember what we have said, in order to conduct a thorough stock analysis, we must focus on the price. But remember, I have out here also the commodity channel period 14, and I will come back to it very shortly, okay? So, the price is going up, okay, it's in a rising channel. If the price is in an uptrend, the challenge for the financial instrument is to display a new higher high. So, in order to display a new high high in an uptrend, the price must break the previous high. So, I have a drawing on my chart here. This was uh, the previous high. So, price move up here and pull back. So, and then this is a high. That's the first high. So, for the price, uh, for the bullish momentum to continue, the price must break the previous high. For some traders that are a little bit, uh, okay, uh, speculative, you may think that these are just blah blah blah. But I mean, this is the challenge that all trade the first every day, okay? So, so the price are going up, the price must bring the previous high, okay? Very, very important in an uptrend. In a downtrend, the price must break the previous low. All right, with this information here, looking at this chart, the IBM stock on a yearly chart, we can see that the previous high is which one? Is this one here? So price went up from here all the way up here and then pulled back. And this was the previous high. It finally breaks its display, a new high high. 
So this is the new higher high here, okay? So when a price break above the previous high, let's put this back here again, Breaks above the previous high, it must, it must stay above the previous high, all right? If it did below the previous high, that will reflect a bit of weakness, all right? It will reflect a bit of a weakness. So, not only that, the IBM stock break above the previous high right here, but now it pulled back somewhere near the previous high. So, the first thing that is coming to my mind is that the best place to buy IBM is here, near the level of 13714. So, if I receive a bullish signal somewhere near the previous high here, all right, I will take it because the market pattern is what is bullish market pattern. This is what we call a market stable data. In order to conduct a thorough technical analysis, one must focus on the price and one must not violate the three market pattern, a rising channel, the declining channel, and a horizontal market pattern. So here, this is a good place at the price of one three seven one four to 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 look for opportunity to buy IBM stock now. Some traders will say that just say to buy IBM stock. I haven't said it. I said that's the best place to look for an opportunity to buy IBM stock. Okay. So now let's let's change. Let's switch now. Let's pay attention to the CC indicator. All right. So I have here my commodity channel index. It's here to assist me uh, to give me some information, and the role of uh, the CCI indicator is to compare the price to a specific moving average. Here I'm using CCI P of 14, so I have here the moving average 14. Here is comparing the price to the moving average 14. Okay. So now looking at my CCI indicator, as you can see here. We can see that my CC indicator is is quite close to the central line, the zero line. That's the dotted line here, the zero line. So, how do we interpret that? When it sees because the CCI went up fast, and I pull it back, it's very close to the central line. The CCI very close to the central line. It means that the price should be also near the moving average 14. All right, should be close to the moving average 14. Here you can see that. Uh, I have too many lines on my chart, but you can see the red one here. You can see just the moving of the 14. And you can see that the price is quite a, a bit away from it. It's still hanging up here. All right? So what do I mean by that? Talking about a thorough technical analysis, we are concentrating on the price. We, we are now, we have a, a rising channel. The price pulled back somewhere near the previous sky. But now we have a, a technical indicator, the CC indicator, telling me that uh, the price normally should be somewhere near the moving average 14. With, in that condition, two things can happen, okay? Pay attention. All right? If the bullish momentum is uh, strong, the price may find a support right here and continue to go up, which I doubt it. In my view, the IBM stock has a high chance to go up a little bit, a, a little bit, yeah, we are, and then slowly but surely will come back near uh, the, the moving average 14. So why? Because some traders, some market participants will place orders already here at 13714. I'm going to change my time frame to the weekly chart to see uh, some aggressive, uh, okay. I'm looking for my uh, gray line here. It is, you see, some aggressive uh, traders will place orders at 13714 uh, to, to buy it at that price, okay. So, as the price coming near the level of 13714, these orders will be filled. Remember, if there are, m if there are many orders placed at 13714, the price will go there. If you are trading stock and you don't understand this, uh, I mean, uh, it's not good, all right? Where there are orders, that's where the price is going. So if there are many orders placed here at 13714, the market will push the price to fill these orders. So in my view, as the price coming is, is, is here now, they will try to push it down. So there's a chance that you will go down a little bit more 
to, to test the zone of 13714 if there are orders here, which I believe there are orders here at 13714. Once these orders are filled, pay attention carefully, my friend. Don't get confused. The price will bounce up a bit. Okay, 13714. I move my line now. Okay, 137. Okay. All right. So once these orders are filled, the price will go up a little bit. Okay. Remember what I said. Okay. The, so price will try to go down a little bit more to one three seven one four. This order will be filled. Price will bounce up a little bit, and then we'll tr we'll go back down. Okay. To retest the moving average fourteen on the yearly chart. So go back again to the yearly chart. What's happening here? The price near the previous high. All this are definitely somewhere here at 137.14. Uh, uh, the market will push the price to fill these orders. Once these orders are filled, the price will bounce up a bit, a bit. Especially you will see on the on the monthly chart. Few candle. If I show you now on the monthly chart, you see what I'm talking about. All right, the, the price will bounce up, okay? Two candle up, something like that, two candle or three candle up, and then come back down again to retest the moving of the 14. Now, why? Because we have here what we call, okay? Unfamiliar CCR divergence. This is an unfamiliar CCR divergence that is taking place here. The CCR is very close to the move to the central line, but the price is not yet exactly on the moving at 14. There is a high chance that the price will bounce up few on the monthly chart I, with a two candle up, something like that. But slowly but surely, we pull back to retest the moving at 14. Because the information that the CCR 40 is giving us is telling that the price should be somewhere near the moving average 14. But now the price is not yet near the moving at 14. There's a high chance that the price in the future, slowly but surely, will come back to retest the moving average 14. But the point I want to make to you here, the first thing that we have done, we, have, we were concentrating on the price itself, the number one indicators. We have noticed that we have a, a rising channel. We want to give priority to bullish signal. The price retesting, uh, okay, uh, the previous high on the yearly chart. Some traders who prefer to buy will place orders at the level of 13714, looking to buy above the previous high, which is normal. Looking at the price alone, that's perfectly okay. But when we switch our attention to the CCIP year 14, we, are, we believe that the price has a high chance to go up a little bit, but slowly but surely will return back to retest the moving average period of 14. Now, in this case, we were analyzing the price. We were concentrating on the price. On the second part, we were concentrating on the CCI indicator. So, to summarize what we have done so far, in order to conduct a thorough technical analysis, one must always trade the price, concentrate on the price. Understand that if the price is going up on any time frame, it will display higher lows and higher high. All right, very, very important. In a downtrend, if the price is going down, the price will display lower lows and lower high. The challenge for the price in an uptrend is the previous high. If the price failed to go above the previous high, it's a weakness. In a downtrend, if the price failed to go below the previous low, it's a weakness in a downtrend. So here, if the price goes above the previous high and pull back a final support, this is the best place to buy, final support above the previous high, and we receive a bullish signal talking about a top-down trading method, we will look for opportunity to buy above the previous high. Some aggressive market participants will automatically place orders above the previous high. That's why you will see that as the price will come, try to pull back near the previous high, orders that are here are filled. So, one thing you need to understand if you are trading stock, if there are many orders, big orders placed here, the price will come here to fill them. If there are no orders here, the price may prefer a, another support level above the previous high. 
But if all the all the biggest orders are placed on the previous high, the price will come and retest the previous high and fill orders here before continuing to go up. Now, in order to conduct uh, okay a thorough talk, uh, thorough stock analysis, one must not use only a technical analysis. So. When we are talking about a thorough stock analysis, we must use the technical analysis, the fundamental analysis, a top-down trading method, and a trading triangle. Now, I need to explain this to you again. In order to conduct a thorough stock analysis, one must use the technical analysis, the fundamental analysis, a top-down trading method, and a trading triangle. Without these uh, four components, one is short from a thorough uh, stock analysis. All right. So what we are doing so far is what we call a technical analysis. So we are looking at the price and we are using a technical indicator. In this case, the commodity channel index indicator. So, so far what we have done, we have done a technical analysis. All right. Concentrate on the price when you are using the technical analysis. And do not violate the market patterns. All right, do not violate the three market patterns. All right, so here the price is retesting the previous high. So, for a swing trader, all right, as everything we have said so far is still valid for a swing trader. At this point in time, a, a trader that wants to buy above the previous high may say this is a bullish trade setup. Price break above the previous high, it retests the previous high, it's a bullish trade setup. But now the challenge for traders is that because the price does not go up in a straight line sometimes, okay? So is to apply a top-down trading method. This is a trading setup, all right? What we have here is a trading setup. That's why I say to you the component of a thorough stock analysis are the technical analysis, the fundamental analysis, a top-down trading method, and a trading triangle. All right. Talking about the fundamental analysis, we go to Google Finance and I will type in IBM stock. We can click on economy news and check the economy news relating to the financial instrument that we are trading. Why? Very often, you'll see a lot of swing traders, uh, speculative traders, will go and use a technical an analysis. But sometimes, if one is aware of the economy news, one will not buy at all. Or if one is aware of uh, the economy news, one will not sell at all. And uh, it makes sense that traders combine the technical analysis with the fundamental analysis. When we are talking about the fundamental analysis, we are talking about, uh, okay, the economy news and the financials, okay? So here you read the economy news at Google Finance, you check the news, and just to pay attention, what is going on? What are they talking about? What is the market sentiment? To have a feel about the stock that you are trading. For some traders, this is one of the things that they need to do to improve their swing trading or their day trading, checking the economy news at Google Finance. If you are trading Forex, check the economy news at Forex Factory. So we come to Google Finance, we put in the EPIC IBM, we click on news, it's there. The next thing that we need to check is the financials. When we are talking about the financial, we are talking about the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow. And Google did a good job here income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. For me, I'm more interested in the balance sheet, okay? And I, I'm interested also here, we have here the quarterly data and the annual data. I want to check the annual data. I perform what I call the Google Finance Acid Test. Check the video on, on YouTube, the Google Finance Acid Test. The first thing that I'm looking for is the current asset. Total current assets, okay, you see here, year by year, you see 2014, 2012, 2012, 2013, 2012, 2011, okay, year by year. I'm looking at the total current asset, this one here, all right, and I'm comparing the total current asset to the total current liability. First, I want to see the trend. Is the total current asset going up or going down? I want to see the trend. So you see 50, 
1928, 49, went down, it went up, 51, 350, yeah, and then it went down. So it's quite stable. It's not going up very much, and it's not going down. It's good. So it's not going down. That's for sure. It's not going down. The total current has said it's not going down. So it's not bad news. If it was going down, that would be a concern for us, talking about a fundamental analysis, performing what we call the Google Funnels Acid Test. Okay? It's not going down. So the next thing I want to check also is the total current liability is here. Total current liability right here. I want to see, the, I want to check the trend. Is it going up? Is it going down? Okay. So looking at here, 42,126, 42, uh, following year, 43,625. It's going up a bit here. And then it dropped at 40,154. And then again, it dropped down here. So, um, it, the total current liability is going down. So, liability means debt, okay? So, if you have less debt, it's good, isn't it? So, we want to, it would be better to have a company that has, uh, okay, a, 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 a current liability going down instead of going up. If the current liability was going up, if you the company is piling on more debt, that will be a big burden on the company, yes or no? So, for the liability, we want it to go down, all right? All right? We don't want it to go up, okay? So, if it's not going down, at least if it's stable, it's not bad, okay? But we don't want it to go down. But for the total current asset, we will prefer it to go up, and we don't want it to go down at all. But for the total current liability, which is debt, we want it to go down or to remain stable. So this is a good company so far, okay? The total current asset is not going up yet, but it's not going down, which is good, okay? The total current liability is going down, which is great for us. The next thing, we compare the current, we are, this is 2014, the current total asset to the current total liability. We want the total current liability to be significantly higher than the total current liability. These are just a few things that we check. We can also check whether the, the, the stock is cheap, all right? The price, the ratio of the price to the earnings, all right? And we want to see whether the earning per share also is going up or not. There are other things that they can do to, to perform uh, the Google Finance or to perform uh, fundamental analysis. But for me, these are a few things that I check quickly to know whether it's worthy, even looking at the stock, uh, trying to trade it or not, whether I should be bearish or bullish. So if I see a technical bullish setup, I'm a swing trader, concentrating on the medium term trend, swing trader, okay, concentrating on the medium term trend. If you are a day trader, you are concentrating on the short term trend. If you are an investor, you are concentrating on the long-term trend. So you want to know who you are. Are you a day trader? So concentrate on the short-term trend. Doesn't mean that you cannot look on the yearly chart, but you are looking at the yearly chart to profit from the short-term trend. If you are a swing trader, you will concentrate on the medium-term trend. So for me as a swing trader, willing to swing trade a stock, I want to check whether the stock has passed at least the Google Finance Assistance, meaning that the current liability, the total current liability, is significantly higher than the total current okay, uh, liability. Okay, Total current asset, significantly higher than the total current liability. I want to see also the trend of the total current asset, preferably to go up, or at least to remain stable, and a total liability to go down, preferably, all right, or to stay stable, all right. So, this is about okay. A stock market swing trader demonstrates a thorough stock analysis. So, first thing first, my friend, we have done a technical analysis, attention on the price, and the market stability uh, and the market patterns. Key thing we need to pay attention to, okay. And then, if you are using any technical indicator. 
The technical indicator will give us a warning. So here, the CCI is giving us a warning. It does not mean that the price will definitely go to retest the moving average 14, but we have a warning. We cannot ignore it. We acknowledge the warning, but we must wait for confirmation. The price will give us the confirmation, giving us a direct signal. Now, as a trader, how do we handle all this information? The, the best way to handle all this information is to use a top-down trading method. So here we have, okay, a, a bullish trade setup with a warning. So if I want to trade this, I will say, okay, this is a bullish trade setup. I'll wait for the signal. The key point here, my friend, if I receive a buy signal, but the signal fails, I'm out of the trade. All right? So by using a top-down trading method, we navigate to the market. I want to show you something here. You look at here. We have a similar scenario here. Pay attention carefully, okay? You see here, the CCI, okay, was quite, uh, here, yeah, look. Uh, I'm talking about this, this candle here. Okay, you see this candle? Now, look, the red line here, that's the moving at 14, okay? You can see that at that point in time, I want to place a vertical line there so you can understand what we call um, familiar CCI divergence. So here we have uh, the, the price was somewhere a, quite, a, a bit away from the moving at 14, which is the red line here, all right? And the CCI was quite close to the central line, yes or no? It's quite close to the central line, okay? So it's giving us a warning that the price has a high chance, not certainty, okay? High, has a high chance slowly but surely to retest the moving average 14 okay here we have the warning but look the price the price look what the price did it went up a bit and then and dropped down and then dropped down to retest the moving at 14 and then went up again and then dropped down dropped down to retest the moving at 14 before the price continued to go up but the warning was given to us somewhere here in this zone Telling us that the price is heading towards the moving average 14. And uh, this is how the price did it here. It's not in straight line, but slowly it did exactly that. Similar situation may arise here again. We have the warning. And we may see a few candles, okay, price going uh, ups and down before, okay, coming to retest uh, the moving average 14. The next step, okay, talking about, uh, okay, a top-down trading method. We are looking for a setup. So on a yearly chart, we have a bullish trade setup. We may use the weekly chart for the signal, all right? And we may use, for instance, the four-hour chart for the entry, all right? This is one example of a top-down trading method. Or if we switch our time frame to the daily charts, okay? We may say, okay, daily chart, bullish trade setup, monthly chart, we on the monthly chart, we have a bullish trades the top, we go to the daily chart for the signal, and we use the hourly chart for the entry. For the entry, we can zoom into it all the way to the 5 minutes, to the 10 minute time frame, okay? All right, so by using a top-down trading method, we are trying to follow the price to time our entry at the right place and at the right time, okay? I don't want the video to be too long because it's not about a top-down trading method, but it is about, okay, how one can conduct a thorough stock analysis. The component of a thorough stock analysis are technical analysis, fundamental analysis, top-down trading method, and a trading triangle. Talking about a top-down, uh, talking about uh, a trading triangle, IBM is a stock that is listed on a Dow 30. When we are talking about the trading triangle, which uh, you can check a video on YouTube, uh, trading triangle by George Rio. We have first the market. When we are trading in financial instrument, we are trading first the market. And then the second thing that we are trading, we are trading the sector, okay? And the third thing that we are trading is uh, the stock itself. But there are other engines that are influence in this treating the market the sector and the stock itself we have uh, other engine which we call the market leaders okay the economy news 
any fundamentals. All right? Now, I don't want the video to be too long, so all I will say to traders is to refer traders back to the video that we call uh, The Trading Triangle by George Rio on YouTube. But for the purpose of this video, IBM is a market leader for the Dow Jones, and it's also listed on the Dow Jones in uh, 30, okay? Now, when we are trading IBM stock, it, it will make sense to check, okay, the Dow Jones index. Because the Dow Jones index represent, reflect in part the group of 30 blue chips in America. So, because uh, IBM is a market leader for uh, Dow Jones index, when we are trading IBM, it will make sense to pay attention to the Dow Jones index. So, but because the IBM is a market leader for Dow Jones, when we are trading also the Dow Jones, we can keep our eyes on the IBM too. So, for the purpose of this video, analyzing IBM stock, one should also analyze the Dow Jones index. So, let's bring on now the Dow Jones index. Okay? So, this is the Dow Jones index on a monthly chart. You can see again we have a similar scenario, but you can see that uh, the price uh, was in a rising channel, similar to the uh, IBM itself. And now the price is pulling back, okay, it's pulling back, okay, to retest, okay, uh, there's a, a small high here, but it's not a significant high, so on this, uh, you see here the price went up, pulled back a bit, went up, pulled back here, so it's retesting this uh, level here at 155.51, so if you look carefully here on the monthly charts, okay, uh, you can see that the, 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 the if I go to, uh, let's go to the yearly chart. So, by the way, let's stay here for a while. You can see that uh, the price is pulling back also uh, to retest uh, this uh, high here for the Dow Jones index. The point I want to make, if, for instance, we receive a signal to buy IBM, it will make more sense to keep eyes on the, uh, on the Dow Jones. If Dow Jones is bullish, it will make sense also to, okay, give priority to bullish signal for stock that are listed on the Dow Jones index, okay? So, in order to complete our thorough technical analysis, trading IBM stock, we should also analyze, okay, the Dow Jones index. In fact, here we have a, a, a positive correlation between the Dow Jones and the IBM stock because the two, stock, the two financial instruments are doing almost exactly the same thing. They are in a rising channel, and they are trying to pull back. If I go to the yearly charts, you can see clearly that uh, the Dow Jones is in a rising channel and uh, there is a bit of pullback taking place here. But the point, I can go on and on and on and on, but I don't want the video to be too long because there are more to this. For the Dow Jones index, what I say to traders is that there is a high chance that the market will continue to go up, up to July 2016. And after that, we are likely to see a, a pullback. So, once again, this is not an indication to traders to go and buy anyhow, but as you can see on the monthly chart for Dow Jones Index, uh, the price slowly but surely, as, as I explained to you for the IBM, it may go up a bit, okay, especially on the monthly chart, two candle up, before pulling back to retest the level of 155.51. So, something like this does not have to do that. So, okay, so something that the prime may find support may go up, continue to go up a bit for two candles up, and then something like this going down to retest, even going a little bit below the level of 15551. After that, we will see the last move up, okay, the last move up, uh, up to July 2016. That remains to be seen. That's my year, okay? Expectation. If the price fulfilling my expectation, we will take advantage of it. But we do not have to force it. We will use what we call a top-down trading method to follow the price or to navigate through the market. So to summarize this video about uh, a stock market swing trader demonstrate a thorough stock analysis, we were using what we call the four components of a uh, stock analysis. The technical analysis focusing on the price and the technical indicators. 
The fundamental analysis focusing on the Google Fana Asset Test, the financials and economy news. The third step, the top-down trading method, using a multiple time frame trading method. The setup is not a signal. The signal is not the entry. So we see the setup. We wait for a signal. If the signal fell, we are out of the trade. All right? And then we select a low risk entry point. This is about a top-down trading method or a multiple time frame trading method. So here on a monthly chart for the Dow Jones, there are aggressive traders that will place order here to buy. This order will be filled automatically if there are many orders here, as I explained to you. This order will be filled automatically. So I will bounce up a bit only to come back down again. If we look at our CCI, okay, for the Dow Jones, you can see that the CCI is turning here. It's turning, okay, pointing towards, okay, uh, they, they're moving at 14. The price is still up here. It will stay here for a while, but uh, we will see whether in, in July 2016, it will start heading towards the moving of the 14. But for now, for the Dow Jones, the level that we want need to retest is the level of 15551. Okay, 15551 is the key levels, all right, before the price will continue to go up, it's up to July 2016, okay? For a trading triangle, when one is trading a stock, one should not concentrate only on that stock. A stock is likely to belong to a group. So you are trading a stock that is listed on the FTSE 100, check the FTSE 100 index itself. You are trading a stock that is listed on the NASDAQ 100, check also the NASDAQ 100 index itself. So when we are talking about a trading triangle, we, are not, we don't want to trade a stock alone, we want to trade the market first. In fact, the market first is the S&P 500. The monitor, it reflects the general market sentiment. So if the market is bullish, we want to be bullish also. If the market is bearish, it makes sense to be bearish. So the point I want to make here, talking about the trading triangle, is that after the technical analysis, the fundamental analysis, the top-down trading method, if we have a bullish scenario, we are bullish, we want to buy. The next thing we need to do is the trading triangle. Is the market bullish? If the market is bullish, we want to concentrate on our bullish watch list. It makes sense. Sometimes traders go and watch videos or they buy a trading system and uh, their trading system fire a beautiful okay, bullish signal. Okay? But the market is bearish. What you should do is to ignore that signal that day, bullish signal that day, and instead look for okay, a bearish signal because the market, if the market is bearish, okay, you want to be bearish. Give priority to bearish signal. But sometimes, some traders trade only one financial instrument, day in, day out, day in, day out. And they want to trade. But some days, it's better not to trade because if your signal or your setup does not align with the general market, okay, it's a big trouble. At the end of the day, a lot of traders stop at the first level, which is the technical analysis. Trader will look, will look at the price and use uh, okay, a technical indicator. If that's you, I invite you now to add a bit to it, the fundamental analysis, a top-down trading method, and a trading triangle. Sometimes, some traders will do the technical analysis and a fundamental analysis, but they don't perform what we call a top-down trading method. And they get shot, they get into trouble because they are not performing the a thorough stock analysis. For some traders that are a little bit advanced traders, they are using the technical analysis perfectly, the fundamental analysis. They are applying a top-down trading method, but they are short from uh, okay, the trading triangle. In order to, 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 to complete a thorough stock analysis, one must start with a, a thorough technical analysis, a thorough fundamental analysis, and a thorough top-down trading method, and a thorough a trading a triangle. I hope you have learned something from this video also. And we put it to use, okay, to perform, okay, a thorough a stock analysis. If you have any question, put it in the comment section. If you think that we should talk about another subject relating to stocks, put it in the comment section, okay? If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, please give us a thumbs down. 
Your feedback is very, very important for us, and this allow us to improve our recording. All right. If you love, okay, this video, you are truly, you truly, truly like it. Feel free to share it on Google Plus, on Twitter, and also on Facebook. But you say you love our videos. Now feel free to subscribe to our channel. This is about uh, okay, a stock market uh, swing trader demonstrate a thorough a stock analysis. We are the TSTW at uh, 24 uh, traders. Speak to you soon.